In this video, I'm going to show you how to create and um, analyze and interpret an interaction effect in SPSS. So go ahead and get SPSS pulled up. Um, I'm going to be using piece of data like in the previous videos. So let's go. So here we have PISA open, or uh, PISA data set open in SPSS. Um, and one of the things that's um, important to do here, if you haven't done this, is to label your variables so that you know what they are. And I like to leave the original variables here just in case something happens and maybe I accidentally relabeled something incorrectly. I can always look back at what these names are here and, and compare them again. Okay, so... The first thing um, that we want to do is we have to compute the variable for the interaction term we want to create. So let's say in this case that we're interested in whether or not um, males and females have differences in their confidence ability in solving particular types of um, equations, and that maybe this these differences matter in terms of their math achievement. So if that's one of our questions, um, then we're going to be looking at this variable here, which is confidence. In, in solving variables, and it's coded between one and four, and so I've uh, made it a scale variable here. And um, and then gender, which I've coded as ones and zeros, um, and I've called that variable female. So what we need to do is go to transform and compute variable, and literally just put it in like this, as female times um, the confidence variable. And notice that we're using an asterisk in the middle, that is the multiplication symbol here. And then here in this box for target variable, um, type in what you want it to be called. In this case, I want it to be called female underscore C-O-N-F. It's just gonna remind me that I'm multiplying these two things together. You can't actually use the multiplication symbol here. It will not allow you to do that. Um, it won't allow you to use the asterisk here. All right, so once you do that, then just click okay, very straightforward. And once you do this, um, you'll see that it adds it at the bottom and it's going to think that it's nominal. I'm not sure why it's um, doing this, but um, if you, we need to change this to scale in order to use it um, in the regression. So, um, and here's my output window that popped up. So if we go to regression linear, then we can start filling this box in. So um, PV1 math is the measure of math achievement on PISA. Um, put that in the dependent box. And then we're going to put um, some other things in here too, because I think that maybe there's some other things that are covariates that may have to do with this relationship. So maybe students' uh, socioeconomic status. Um, of course, students' confidence and whether they're male or female are going to matter here. Um, and then uh, maybe whether the, their home language is different than the language of the test. And maybe even their um, experience with solving applied math tasks may have something to do with this, which we could call opportunity to learn. So we're gonna put this in block one. And then we're going to put the same exact things in the same order in block two. Um, and this time we're going to include the interaction effect. And this is in order to compare the two models to see if when we add this interaction term, does it statistically significantly improve the model? So remember, we got to put things in exactly the same order. So SES, confidence, gender, language, applied math. So we've got SES, confidence, gender, um, language, applied math, and then our new computed variable, female underscore CONF. Put that in there. Now under statistics, we wanna make sure we're looking at R squared change. This is going to allow us to compare the two models and see if it uh, has improved the fit. Um, and I'm also going to look at the collinearity diagnostics. I mean, we're including female and confidence in the model, and then we're technically including them again in a different format by multiplying 
those two things together. So we need to make sure we aren't running into some multicollinearity issues by including um, all three of these things in the model. All right. Um, if you wanted to, you could also look at this part in partial correlations. I'm not as interested with that right now. Um, although we will have uh, the, the semi-part correlation technically in the, um, the change in the R squared values for female times confidence. Click OK. And you can see here um, it's showing that the only thing that was added in model two was female underscore CONF, which is what we want to see. Everything else was uh, the same from model one. Um, looking at the adjusted R squared, we went from 0.321 to 0.322, so only a change of 0.001, so 0.1% additional um, variance explained by adding this interaction term to the model. So it doesn't sound very promising at the moment, although it's telling us that there was a statistically significant improvement in that. Um, however, keep in mind that our sample size is very large which is causing this to um, be more likely to produce a statistically significant result. Looking at the ANOVA table, of course, both models are statistically significant. Um, and then we have our coefficients table. So um, if we jump down to model two here um, and we look at female times confidence, we see that um, it is statistically significant and every single variable is statistically significant less than 0 0.001 uh, p-value for the p-values. And then if we look at the, the collinearity statistics here, we see um, the variance inflation factor, uh, all of those values are less than 10, telling us that we are not having any issues with multicollinearity. So all the values are statistic, all the, uh, the variables are statistically significant. We don't have any variance inflation. Um, and so, maybe it's okay to assume that including it matters. And at this point, we can dig deal into practicalities. So um, obviously, um, six and a half points is very small. Um, and, and if we were to assume that this could have some practical significance, we could say that there appears to be a relationship such that um, females have differences in the way that they are confident in solving these math tasks and that that matters on their achievement, in their mathematics achievement, uh, in that they actually score, females score a bit higher than males on this assessment. Um, um, no, I'm sorry, they actually score a little bit lower. So if we go back, um, how this was coded, I forgot about this. So um, a one means very confident and a four means not confident at all. So actually, uh, as the confidence value increases, um, you're going to uh, have less confidence. So actually, students, um, as their confidence goes down, um, they actually have a higher score on this test, which tells me that um, it is likely that this test was not assessing very well the types of equations that the students had confidence in and that males actually um, experience less of this. Now, however, look at the female variable, negative 18. So um, in this model right now, females scored quite a bit less than males, and as their confidence increases, um, that difference starts to close a little bit. And, and females did have... Um, um, their confidence was different than males. So um, that's how to do this in SPSS. And um, hopefully you've learned a little bit about this and I'll see you next time.